Trevor, thank you very much. And yes, as Trevor mentioned, we have more now on the horrific news coming out of London, Ontario. A 20-year-old man has been charged with four counts of murder and one count of attempted murder after a hit and run on Sunday. The vehicle struck a family of five, killing four of them and seriously injuring a nine-year-old boy. It's now being investigated as a hate crime, with London police believing that the family was targeted because they were Muslim. Ibrahim Hindi is an imam in Mississauga and the director of the Yakin Institute, which is a Muslim think tank which combats Islamophobia. And uh, Imam Hindi has been good enough to join us now on the line for more. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Jason. Thank you for having me. Well, thank you very much for taking the time with us. Uh, Imam, first off, your reaction to the news today. You know, I, I think, like many people, I just felt really sick to the core uh, hearing about this and, you know, seeing the community as well receive this news, I think we're feeling just a, a great mixture of, of pain, significant pain and fear. Just it's, it's unconscionable to think that, you know, a family, a peaceful family trying to live like everyone else and go for a walk like everyone else couldn't even do that in, in peace and security in this country. And speaking of the community, of course, you're based in, in Mississauga. What have you been hearing from within the community as, as everyone uh, attempts to process today's news? Yeah, I think, you know, all of us and, you know, I found out that some friends of mine are even, you know, relatives of of the victims. But I I think all of us are just, you know, just the idea that this is a family that's dead and there's only one of them left, uh, an eight-year-old or nine-year-old boy. And they look like us and they dress like us and they believe like us. And when we see them, we really see like it's one of our own family. And that somebody out there, and I'm sure there's many others like him, When they see us, they think that we shouldn't exist, that we should be killed um, just because of our faith or our dress or our skin color. And I know that's very uncomfortable maybe for a lot of Canadians to hear, but unfortunately it's the truth. And so a lot of this is just us grappling with that with that fact and feeling this mixture of pain and fear and people reaching out to me saying, I don't know that I could go for a walk now or do I need to keep looking over my shoulder because of because of this. And so you know, there's there's a lot of mixed emotions and mostly emotions of just incredible pain and, 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 and worry about the future as well. The National Council of Canadian Muslims is, is calling this a terrorist attack and asking the Canadian government to consider terrorist charges. What do you make of that? I think it's warranted. I think if, if you know, other, there's been other attacks in which, um, you know, vehicles have been used as weapons and... Uh, intending to, you know, cause damage to people for um, social or political reasons. And, and we treat them as terrorism attacks. And I think that that's true here as well. And, you know, we don't want the law to be applied equally and absolutely should be applied here because this isn't simply a murder. This is someone who, as the police said, it was premeditated. He decided he wanted to kill Muslims. He wanted to drive fear and terror into an entire community in this country. And and that that's the definition of terrorism. Mustafa Farouk is the CEO of the National Council of Canadian Muslims. I just want to read you some of uh, what he had to say, and I'm quoting here. This loss of a family, the loss of a child in our community because of Islamophobia, this is a sorrow that will run deep for a long time. But let that sorrow be a ground where we can stand for justice and stand for change. Yeah, Imam, what change needs to happen right now in your view? Well, you know, I think, first of all, the country has to accept this. I mean, I, I, I'm not sure, you know, we've, we've said so many times um, that Islamophobia is real, that it kills. And I'm not sure that the message has sunk in with Canadians in general. And I say this with pain because I love this country and I was born here. But it was only a few years ago that there was the Quebec City mosque massacre mm-hmm. where somebody walked into a mosque and killed six people who were praying and kneeling. Uh, a year ago in Toronto, there was a caretaker um, outside of a mosque, and someone walked up to him and stabbed him and killed him. There have been dozens of attacks against Muslim women across this country. But we keep saying whenever these incidents happen, we keep saying, hey, this isn't Canada, you know, this isn't London, Ontario, this isn't Quebec City, this isn't, this isn't Toronto. But it is, because it keeps happening over and over. So if we don't want it to be us, if we really don't want it to be who we are, then we have to actually have to take change against this. And I think that that goes from the top to the bottom, from our political leaders, our civic leaders, down to, you know, every Canadian needs to realize that this is a real problem. You know, there were white supremacist rallies, anti-Muslim rallies that were happening in London, Ontario. 
So somebody, a young 20-year-old guy who decides that he wants to mow down and kill the Muslim family, that doesn't come out of a vacuum. And all of us have to take ownership and realize that that's, that, that's the reality. And if we want justice for this family, if we want that nine-year-old boy to grow up, you know, feeling like this country really felt sympathetic to what he's going to go through his whole life and really had his back, then we have to be people who make sure that, that something like this, like this doesn't happen again. If not through a horrific incident like this or any of the multitude that you just mentioned or the ones that we haven't mentioned, uh, what will it take for the reality of Islamophobia to be accepted by those who, who aren't accepting it? I don't know. I, I Honestly, this is the part that, that makes me feel at a loss because, you know, this type of, of, of loss of life just, you know, it, it's horrific and we can't look away. You know, and if people can manage to look away from some, something like this, I don't know what will shake us out of a slumber like that. Um, it was only years ago where politicians refused to even use the word Islamophobia to acknowledge its existence. So I, I, I hope that in the aftermath of this, they don't look away, that they realize that they have a debt to this nine-year-old boy who's going to grow up without a sister, without a mother and a father, and, and grandparents, that three generations of his family were wiped off in a single day, that we feel indebted to him. And we make sure that we actually work against Islamophobia and racism and all types of xenophobia that exists in our country and not pretend that it doesn't exist. Imam Hindi, thank you very much for taking the time to speak with us this afternoon. We so appreciate it. Thank you. Well, just Ibrahim Hindi, who is a Mississauga imam, chairman of the Muslim Council of Peel and director for the Yakin Institute.